Welcome to the Caddy Wampus Podcast. I'm Kirk Driscoll, your host. I'm here with a good friend of mine, Dan Daniel. Actually, Dr. Dan Daniel. I, I, need, to, I need to make sure I put Dr. Dan Daniel. Three Ds, right? Yeah, yeah. so um, we're not going to do the double Ds today. We're going to do the triple Ds today. But, um, right. man, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Kirk. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty awesome to have you. And, um, you know, I like to always start just, like, how, how we met. And I believe it was at our kids' School at Kings Ridge. Was it at Kings Ridge? It was at Kings Ridge. Yeah. And so you actually, you talked to me, which was great. I was like, oh, he doesn't think I'm completely crazy. <laughs> um, no, but no. actually, you know, the first time we met. Where was the first time? Uh, I was looking to get a new office. Ah. And you remember, it was off of Highway 9, 9, just yep. north of North Fulton, and you uh, you had your old big Hummer back then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you pulled up, and, and that's the first time we met. That was the first time. And that yeah. was, ra- so as I was talking with Zach beforehand, that, I try to stay uh, under the radar and just kind of go about my day and not really draw much attention to myself these days. But I did used to have a jacked up Hummer H2 <laughs> that was wrapped with lightning bolts and oh, it was yeah. the Power Realty uh, Mobile without a doubt. So exactly. I didn't realize that was there, but we shared our kids have grown up together. Our wives know each other well. She's actually in your, your wife's actually in the real estate business now. Yes. And um, it's just, it's been it's been fun living life with you um, as we've just journeyed through our kids being raised and just all all life. So pretty awesome. What can you say? Yeah. Well, how would you describe me to somebody? If if um, if someone hadn't met me before, how would you describe me? This would be interesting. Yeah. It, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you're a committed guy. I mean, yeah, you look at what you've done, you know, with uh, with your ministry and, and outreach with addiction. Yeah. And it takes sheer commitment. And that's what I've seen. Becky and I have been totally amazed with that. I mean, we're uh, always um, and, and you're committed to your family. Uh, so I, I think commitment is, is a, a huge uh, aspect. Um, I think technicality. I mean, you, you think of even your passion for hunting. I mean, yeah. you're so technical uh, in what you do, uh, the real estate aspect. Um you know, it, you're 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 not somebody who's just kind of slouching around. You kind of dig into it, and you. I may be trying to look like I'm slouching. No, but, but I, you know what I'm saying. You you, yeah. you just kind of get the job done, but you go above and beyond. Man, I appreciate yeah. that, man. Yeah. That's a, you know, we we started doing uh, these really. Several people have been pushing me on it, but a particular person, and she said I played a oh shucks dumb redneck card too much. Like she's like you need to let people know and in a little bit, but yeah. Um. So. I love genuine friendships and in relationships, and it's yeah. it's it, they've crossed over and crossed paths back and forth so so much. So I'm just I'm I'm grateful for you, and thank you for being willing to be here. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and so just high level because I know it's going to feed into your your cattywampus moment. Yes, um, and how it, it's really an awesome story. I can't wait to to share it with everyone. But just a little bit of background: what you you. Graduated college, then went to medical school. So wh- how long have you been? Sure. Well, I'm originally from uh, York, Pennsylvania, okay. and uh, went to medical school and college outside of Philadelphia. And I uh, went to Thomas Jefferson University in Philly, which is actually the biggest and oldest private school, medical school in the country. Um, people oh. don't know about that. Um, came down to Atlanta to do a residency in, at Emory. And uh, I did that in physical medicine re- rehabilitation. I stayed on uh, board a little bit longer and actually did a brain injury rehab um, fellowship at Emory and ran the brain injury unit there. We you had, might be able to help me. We need to talk after exactly, this. Yeah. Exactly. But, I mean, we were dealing with some low-level coma patients. We were doing some research on coma stimulation. Um, it was pretty intense. Um, then I ended up doing some more training in interventional pain management and um, doing spinal injections and just uh, kind of uh, physical medicine. You know, it's kind of like non-operative orthopedics. So we're looking at muscle pain, joint pain, kind of form and function. And uh, um, then ended up at North Fulton Regional Hospital. Um, That's about when we first met. It was probably around 2000 when we we first first met. met. And... um, so, um, you know, started my private practice and um, was rehab medical director at North Fulton for about six years and then just converted only to doing pain management. 
Yeah. And that's where we pick up the story. Yes. But what I love about the story where they're going to, of the commitment you're talking about of my commitment, but your commitment to see some things and like, okay, Hey, I'm going to make a change here. Um, is what I hope people realize when they see this, if you're stuck somewhere and that's not where you feel like you should be, or you don't want to be a part of something, making a change like you did. So what was that cattywampus moment that you want to well, share with us? We'll get to that moment, but yeah. I can tell you as a physician, um, ethical physician. Um, that's, a big, always, that's a big word, an it, ethical physician. Yes, yes, I always try to do the right thing. But, you know, it, being in pain management, we were taught that narcotics were safe, that it had a minimal chance for addiction if, if it was prescribed and followed by physician uh and if they got addicted you could easily get them off and um i mean conference after conference after conference then we had the oxycontin reps we had the ms cotton we had uh the fentanyl reps coming in um all these different long-acting morphine companies all these reps day in and day out here are more coupons for you you're not writing up narcotics they would tell me this that's illegal to say Right. Um, you know, drug companies are not able to tell you how much you're writing compared to other doctors, but they, they did. It was like the gloves were off. They didn't care. And so in 2004, um, uh, I was kind of being forced to be prescribing medications in the back of my mind. Okay. The, the, um, you know, all the stuff I'm learning at these courses and, and from our, our boards and everything else, keep writing it. You're not writing enough. And so I was in this like gray zone all the time, this constant turmoil. And I started seeing a fallout. In 2002, I started doing urine drug screening in my office. And I mean, I had people that not only had marijuana, they had cocaine, PCP. If they were on oxycodone, well, they had methadone in, in, their, in their urine. Uh, they had or they didn't have it at all. And you're thinking, what is going on here? And so I really um, started to, to question things. And I'd bring it up with other doctors at conferences. And they said, you're overreacting. In fact, what you need to do, you'll make so much money. You need to get a certified lab in your office so you can bill directly with Medicare and with all these insurance companies and you'll be able to see them every month and do a full screen and make tons of money. And I said, well, first of all, I don't want to go to jail. And secondly, I don't think that's ethical. So in 2004, um, the Oxycontin reps especially were coming into my office almost daily. And I said, you know what? No more reps. And I told the Oxycontin rep, you're not welcome here. Don't bring me anything. I don't want any coupons. I don't want anything. And um, every time I went to a conference, they'd say, do you still have the Iron Curtain up? And I'd say, absolutely. And from 2004, I have not had reps ever come into my office. They're just not allowed. I think they're disruptive at times, and especially the narcotics. So this thing, this quandary kept brewing in my mind. And I had people on chronic pain medications that did well. And I did a lot of interventional pain management, acupuncture. We had personal training in my office. I was really focused on getting people off, doing a different avenue with chronic pain, and I think we're really successful. And then uh, 2011 comes, and there are new regulations now from the state, and it was our society, our pain society, that really pushed to have this happen, where if you were board certified in pain, which I was, you were one of the only doctors that prescri could prescribe chronic narcotics. So within a month, I had over 100 new patients take over my Oxycontin, take over my methadone, take over my fentanyl. And I freaked out. And I told people, I'm not willing to take you on. And um, there was one day um, a patient said, uh, I need 80 milligrams of Oxycontin three times a day, plus four tablets of 30 milligram roxycodone. So let's do the math. Yeah. 80 milligram Oxycontin is 16 tablets of Percocet in one tablet times three. So we're up to 48 and then four Roxy. Roxy's. I mean, it's unbelievable. And I said, well, first of all, I've never written that dose. 
and you're not going to be the first one. So I'm not going to take you on as a patient. I'm sorry. And he said, you know what? I got two friends in my car that might change your mind. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, their names are Smith and Wesson. Mm. And I said, you know what? I know where you live. I have a copy of your license. And um, you need to leave immediately. And we didn't call the police. He said, oh, man, I'm joking. I'm joking. Don't take it so harsh. And um, I went home and I told my wife, I am leaving medicine. Um, I am done. I have lived with this quandary of this pain, you know, um, this epidemic that was, was so much uh, involved the drug companies and medicine. It, with bad training, I didn't want any part of it. I was furious. And um, I just happened to go on vacation with my uh, brother. A couple weeks later, we're sitting on the beach. And I was telling him about this story, and he's a plastic surgeon. And I said, you know what, I think I'm going to quit. I think I'm just going to shut my practice down, just literally liquidate everything. I'm not even going to sell my patients. I'm done. And I might get my MBA and go into real estate. I don't know. But I want to be alive for my family. And um, he said out of the blue, why don't you go into hair transplant? And um, so the funny thing is we're on the beach. It's like lunchtime, right? Yeah. And um, I'm like, I'll have to check it out. So I'm walking up the beach. My wife's walking down the beach, and she said, there's lunch meat on the table. Make yourself a sandwich. And, and then everybody's down at the beach. Come on back down. So I went up to the house. Now, we have like 30 people in this house. Like yeah. there are 17 grandkids and all that stuff, uh-huh. my parents. But nobody's in the house. So it's, I get out the laptop, and I start Googling hair transplant conferences. And um, I found a number and I called and the lady said, you know, it was totally booked until about an hour ago. Somebody just dropped out. She said, if you have a credit card, uh, it's yours. So I gave her my credit card number, went down to the beach and told my wife, uh, I just signed up for a hair transplant course. <laughs> How did that go over? Oh gosh. She said, <laughs> she's like, you're losing it. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> I can, I can, I can, I can, I'm just trying to think I've had several of those conversations with my wife. And she reacted about just like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, you're losing it. Get it together type of thing. But, you know, um, I told her, I don't see a future in what I'm doing. And I want to be around for you guys. And I'm serious about this. I feel really threatened right now. Um, Not to mention, you know, I had a patient steal a prescription pad. I had um, a patient getting prescriptions from 15 doctors and selling it. So what happens? You get the DEA in your office randomly, federal agents, and you know you're just like. And so even trying to be ethical, yes, and trying to be honorable and truly provide care to your patients uh, is is still the good that you're trying to do is just it was it was a war zone. It was a war zone, and not to mention the addiction was so strong, so conniving. You know they really. The patients that had issues, and I'm not trying to condemn them because this is a real problem that was perpetuated by medicine in the drug reps. Mm. And a lot of these doc- or these patients, doctors are like, you got to take your medicine and stay above the pain. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Take the medicine even if you don't need it. And so people were on it for three or four weeks and they had issues. But those issues then funneled back towards me with with lying and selling and giving medicines away or taking, you know, from family members and, you know, kind of relying on me. Oh, you're a doctor. You're, you're a good guy. You can help me out type of thing. Yeah. And I was not going to help out. I was, I had discharged hundreds of patients um, just because we had contracts and we, you know, it's like, it's not that hard. Um, or you're in drug screens failed. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, it's kind of like a black hole for me, you know, thinking about those years. Um, you know, I, I have a lot of success yeah, or successful stories, right. but I also have a lot of regret because I knew in the back of my mind something doesn't add up here. Yeah. I mean, don't tell me there's something called pseudo addiction where people are like, escalating their dose oh they're not on the right medicine so why don't you convert them to another equally strong narcotic you know what i mean that was that was a term that was developed by the sackler family by oxycontin 
It was not a true medical diagnosis. This is how we were connived. And so, um, you know, I've read Empire of Pain about the Sackler family. I've watched Painkiller, you know, a Dope Sick, all that stuff. And um, You found it to be pretty true? Oh, gosh. So much of it was true. I've watched The Pharmacist. I've seen these things, and I've seen doctors get pulled into this, and they ruined their careers. Some ended in jail. You know, yeah. one in federal penitentiary. And a lot of it was greed, especially on the urine drug screen side. Right. But a lot of it was, I think I'm doing the right thing. And didn't know and when by the time it rolled out and you look back, it's, you know, we, we trust, typically we trust the medical professional saying from yes. us and the information that they're receiving in the way they're being yep. taught. But there's so many things today that are cattywampus from medical to political oh. to faith, everything. And it's like, what information do you believe? And so I give you extreme, um, just props for stand, for standing up and walking away from an extremely successful it, it wasn't like some little practice that was dying at the peak at the peak of where you were doing extremely well. Yeah. And all you had to do is just roll with the punches, what everybody else was doing. Hey, I don't think this is right, but everybody's doing it. So it must be okay. You could have quadrupled probably your revenue that you had been getting, but you said, no, enough's enough. Mm -hmm. I'm leaving and closed down. So what did you learn? What did you learn about yourself in that? You know, uh, you have to do the right thing and and the right thing oftentimes mm. it comes down to I'm not going to make as much money it's going to be a lot more, a lot stressful or a lot more stressful um, but it also taught me man if you're going to make a life change you better be committed you better do the research you better figure out where you want to go and you better get the education the other thing I did is I've I, I found like the key players in the industry and I called them up and I said, Hey, how much would it cost for me to spend a day with you? Yeah. Sometimes $2,500. Yeah. But that was invaluable. And they became mentors for me. Um, I would email them cases and, um, you know, they would check in on me. I'd see them at conferences and they'd say, Hey Dan, come on over. Let me yeah. introduce you to these guys. And so I got connected with the top people in hair yeah. restoration. Yeah. And then I went through kind of the whole uh, array of learning it and then perfecting it and then taking it to a level that other people uh, can't yeah. even think of. Yeah. And now, and I'm not trying to toot my horn, I've literally become a world leader here in Alpharetta doing hair transplant. Yeah. And it's been 12 years. Listen, I just, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> hiding from him. He's been, he been after me for a while. I remember yeah. like the first week he had started, he's like, oh man, like I can fix that. I'm like, I know, but it's, it's a lot of fixing needs to be done. So yeah. the, hat, the hat works pretty good on a, on a sunny day anyway. Yes. But no, it's been really fun watching that journey. And there's just most people, right. Um, won't make radical change when it's necessary. Successful people do. Yes. And not just successful in business, successful in life, yep. their marriage, their faith, what, whatever it looks like it. it it, it's not always going to be easy. Yep. It's generally often going to be painful. Yep. Um, but on the other side of the storm, there's calm, there's calm waters and, and there's the ability to enjoy that commitment and the discipline. I, I was told, and, and, I, and uh, Coach Curry was actually the first person I heard say it, um, but I don't know where it actually originated, and, but it's kind of a life model that comes in. There's two pains in this world, the pain of discipline, or the pain of regret. Yeah. I've got plenty of regret. I'm yeah. by no means perfect. Oh, Still gosh. make mistakes. But the things that I try to be as disciplined in is not because I just want to be in that pain and I want to be in that discipline. I want the rewards of that discipline. Yeah. Your experience in the world, you've got an extreme, you go from successful pain management company, yeah. close it down, and I'm going to start doing hair restoration. I mean, that, that you went to medical school, you've built a brand, you've done all this and yeah. just to drop it and leave it. Yeah. So if someone's watching this and they're just at a job that, you know, it's a job, you haven't went to years of years of school and, and pushed and pushed and pushed to get to that point. If you're yeah. doing something that you don't believe in, you don't think it's right, quit, just quit it. You know, I, I had, um, three board certifications doing what I do in pain, physical medicine, rehab, pain management and disability and impairment ratings. And, um, you know, that's, that's kind of all I knew. And so 
um, luckily, you know, I had my father. Now, you know, my, my father recently passed away, and mm. I have to put in a plug for him. His name is Joe Daniel. Mm. You can look him up on, on the web. I couldn't have had a better dad. And he really was so instrumental for me. He was, he was, has always been my life mentor to just say, you know, Dan, you got to do it. And, you know, we, we came up with a plan together, but I executed it. Yeah. And it's not like he was, you know, telling me what to do. I mean, I had to make it for myself. Yeah. And there was a really rough patch um, where I shut down the pain practice and I said, I'm, I'm going for the hair. Yeah. And here I am, kind of a newbie in the industry, and patients are like, how many cases have you done? <laughs> you know yeah, what I well, mean? After this one, uh, I've done one. Yeah. You know? So, you know, now I'm, I'm, I'm close to about 4,000 cases. 4,000 cases. Yeah. I've done over 5 million graphs myself. Yeah. And, and now I'm in an industry where, like, the doctors aren't all that involved. It's almost tech-driven. And I'm one of the few doctors in the country that does the whole case even though I have a really awesome team and I've got two physician's assistants that help me. Um, I recently got my master's in business at yeah. Auburn University. You graduated the same time. You had a daughter graduate high school, a daughter graduate college, and you graduated. Uh, all in the same week. All in the same week. It was a great, that's a great uh, picture that came across Facebook. Yeah. It was like, man, that doesn't happen every day. Yeah, so you know, I'll be 56 next week, so... Um, but I wasn't the oldest. There were two others that were older, older in my program. It was a physician executive MBA, but I did that really to kind of complement what I'm doing. I've always wanted to do it. And I'm at a point in my life, like put up or shut up, yeah. you know, get it done. Yeah. So, and I told my wife, I'm not going to do this and whine or complain. If I do just smack me. Yeah. And I never did. I had fun with it. Yeah. And I think, if I could give anyone advice, if you're in that that kind of life transition mode, like start having fun about imagining where you're going to be and what you want. Yeah. But don't have that imagination as your focus. Now you've got to come up with a way to get there. And it means you got to rely on mentors. you got to find them. You have to search them out. You find leaders in whatever industry you're in. Yeah. You've got to read or, or listen to books. Uh, you have to listen to podcasts, not just in your industry. Especially this one. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You got to listen to this And one. my podcast. Uh, and Dan's podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you have to create literally a better image of yourself. Yeah. And and I think, you know, what I do on a daily basis, you know. Yeah, I, that's those I, daily disciplines. So we yeah. call them daily disciplines or the yeah. double Ds. In your case, we might call them the triple Ds. <laughs> Right. The Dr. Dan Daniel, and he said, "What are yeah. the what are some of those disciplines you do?" Yeah, well, one is exercise. Um, I get up early. Um, I usually get up at four thirty every day, yeah. and um, I, um, I I generally go to bed early. So I, do, I get probably about seven hours of sleep a night, right. seven and a half, which is fine. Um, but I either swim, run, lift, stretch. It's a movement. Um, yes. Yeah. And it's something that you have to do. And if I don't do it in the morning, it's just not going to get done. No. Um, the next is, um, you know, um, spirituality. It's I'm not like actively involved in like a Bible study and things like that. I have been in the past, and I yeah. think that's coming. Yeah. Um, but uh, spirituality is part of my kind of my daily thoughts, um, and um, that's a big part of my life. Um, you know, I uh, education is huge. For me, um, so never quit learning. It never quit. Uh, you know, when I do hair transplant cases, I have the bone phone, so I'm either listening to a podcast or an audio book, you know, or something that's stimulating my mind. Um, and um, I think those are the three pillars for me for right you. there. And then family. I mean, yeah. we're we're just tight. You yeah. know, I have great kids, a great wife. I, I think we have a good time together. Yeah. And um, so, you know. how epic is life now? As we wrap down and close on this, I mean, radical life change, leave an industry that most would aspire to get to, and you just you, you stop and, and you stop it because of, of what it is. But how epic is life now? After that, that being just discipline driven and saying, yeah. okay, I'm going to make a change because this isn't right. How yeah. epic is it right now? Oh, it's, it's epic. You know, I, I position myself to be a doctor that can actually make recommendations and actually do them. 
I'm not a salesman. I don't approach my patients at all from sales. I don't even sell any products. Yeah. Um, but I give them information and I try to connect with them through our podcast, through, uh, I do all the consults myself. I don't have a sales yeah. team or PA do it. And um, I, I, I tell them, I'm not here to sell you. I, I, I'm here to educate you. In fact, I'd like you to get as many consults as you can. And if you choose me, I think we'll do a great job. We can serve you well. You'll have a great experience, great outcome. Yeah. That's not the common thing in medicine now. You make a recommendation. Oh, we got to get insurance approval. Oh, they denied it. You know, yeah. um, that's not my life. And um, the other thing is, what doctor gets to spend all day with a patient? Sometimes my my cases are eight to ten hours. So, um, you know, I get to connect with really? patients on such a longer you know, more detailed manner where, you know, uh, we can start talking about whatever. And uh, since now I have more of a business background and, and kind of leadership background, um, I want to be a different doctor. That's I want to awesome, be man. somebody that can affect people because I think doctors are missing the boat. Five minutes with an iPad, you hurt right here, they're just poking at you. That's not the way medicine should be practiced. Uh, it should be... Uh, we should be a light to our patients. So I really feel that's one of the, the joys that I have in doing medicine right now. That's awesome, man. That I'm able to do that. So uh, I'm going to put a plug in for my podcast. No, please do. Yeah, we're on Spotify and iTunes, and yeah. uh, you can look it up at uh, North Atlanta Hair Restoration or Dr. Daniel A. Daniel, MD. Yeah, um, and we'll put it down, too, in the, the bio down at the yeah. bottom so that they can get it connected with yeah, you. Yeah, but we uh, that those are all audio podcasts, mainly about hair. Um, but I'm changing things up a little bit. Um, I, I wouldn't, I couldn't expect anything less yeah. than that. So, so we're going to go video. Awesome. And I know a guy is over here behind the camera that can probably help you. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So, well, so, but we're going video and I think it's going to be called, we haven't finalized it. Leadership looks like dot, dot, dot with quotes. Yeah. And basically we'll talk about leadership and hair restoration, but I'd like to get some guests on. And really, my patients that are, you know, looking for hair restoration, I want them to get exposed to the other side and yeah. hopefully open up a discussion to say, like, do you remember that guy you had on yeah. last month? Yeah. Man. That'd be really cool. Just tell a story. I mean, you here's a, here's a great thing. And what I love about what you do is you're truly serving your patient, meeting them where they are, helping them get what they want, whether it was out of pain or it's a particular look, yeah. but providing solid, sound advice, medical support, medical yes. medical direction, but then all to, to genuine friendship and understanding and meeting them. So I'm grateful for your commitment. Well, I and, thank you. And and thanks for being here. Uh, well, this is awesome. I, I think it's going to get some folks fired up. If it doesn't get them fired up, then they didn't just listen to what you said. It. No, yeah, no, just rewatch it again because... Um, I wish more doctors would do what you've done, and I wish more people in general would be willing to stand in the gap when it's hard, but yeah. stand in the gap so that they can they can be committed to what they're doing and in be, the life and be purposeful. Yes, without yeah. a doubt. So, yeah. thank you for watching this week's episode of Caddy Wampus, and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you.